So we are going to be looking at the responses of viscoelastic materials. And specifically, we're going to be looking at two unique types of experiments. Um, one is creep. So creep, we are going to apply a constant stress and we are going to measure the response of the strain as a function of time. Now, if I'm, a, if I'm an elastic system or a you know standard linear elastic so, a cubic solid, when I apply a constant stress that is in the elastic regime, I'm just going to see a constant strain. But for viscoelastic materials, you'll often see, and we expect to see kind of this initial shoot going up and then this kind of asymptotic relationship here. And we'll also look at stress relaxation, which where we apply a constant strain now, oops, a constant strain, and we look at the stress as a function of time, and you'll see, again, an instant shoot up and then this kind of exponential decay um, as it relaxes to some finite value um, that is non-zero. So, Let's see if we can create a simple model using springs and dash pots to solve these systems. The Maxwell model looks at a spring and a dash pot in series. So if I'm looking at these two components in series, it means that when I pull this system, I can see, and actually here, and here's how you're gonna describe the spring and the dash pot. When I have them in series, actually let's look, make sure, uh, Let's go ahead here. So the stresses are gonna be the same for the spring and the dash pot, but the strains are gonna be different. So the strains are gonna sum. So my expressions are gonna be, the stress in my Maxwell model is the same as the stress in the spring and the dash pot. The strain is gonna be equal to, in my Maxwell model, is gonna be the uh, strain in my spring plus the strain in my dash pot, which is gonna be equal to, and I can, I don't have an expression for and we look at we can look up here. My expression for my dash pot is has that basically a time derivative. So I'm gonna have to look at the time derivative of this whole expression. So now I can take this on my Maxwell strain plus stress in my dash pot over eta. Um, actually, not my Maxwell of my spring. But we just said the sp uh, the stress in the spring actually, is equal to the stress in the dash pot, so that's gonna be a Maxwell model, and the stress in the dash pot will be equal also to the Maxwell model. So, I've just switched, and now you can see all of my components um, are in terms of my overall Maxwell model. So, we can go ahead and we can work with this constitutive equation um, to look at what is gonna be the response in my model. So, if we look at stress relaxation, we plug in what? What's gonna be the constant value for stress relaxation? We're gonna have a constant strain. So this is zero. And you see we do have this nice response where our stress versus time looks like this and it decays here, which is pretty good. And then we have this relaxation time that's defined um, by our parameters here. Now, for creep, the relationship looks a little bit strange. So it's actually linear. Um, so our Maxwell model is good in terms of stress relaxation, but it fails in terms of capturing the behavior of polymers in creep. The Kelvin Voigt model, since they are in series, we can tell that the strains must be the same, but now the stresses are different. So you can see in this expression, our stresses now add while our strains are equivalent and we get another constitutive relationship where every value is in terms of the Kelvin Voigt model. And if we do the same thing, stress relaxation now is strange. This looks, this is linear. And here we get a more typical response for creep where it's this value and then it's an asymptote. So you can do better models um, using kind of the standard linear viscoelastic solid, but you'll experience this more in other uh, courses um, probably machine design and other advanced mechanical, uh, mechanical behavioral material courses or polymer courses to look at this type of behavior uh, for creep and stress relaxation. So don't worry about it too much for this course. It's just a kind of a supplemental lecture. But we have something that's very cool that will come up in just in the next video, which is very relevant to our course, which is 
we can actually det to determine this viscous and elastic response using dynamic mechanical testing. Um, so DMA analysis, um, dynamic mechanical analysis is one of the techniques that we'll talk about. So we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.